What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today we're talking battery backup version 3. Uh, for those of you who have seen my version 2 uh, video, I'm going to do a small tiny upgrade to this um, to make it just a little bit better and then we're going to cover the version 3 and then compare the two. So for the version 2 upgrade, it is identical. Uh, this will look a little different from the previous video, but all it really is is how I've run the charging uh, cables here over to the batteries. We still have the green battery, the blue battery. Um, in this version 2 setup, the green battery is still the primary battery, and I'll explain why that is, and the blue battery is the backup battery. Um, over here, I just have a, a generic power source. Uh, currently, it is sending 150 and looks like uh, 149 uh, over to the blue battery here. Yep. And so uh, that's it. So the only change here is that, you know, this, this simple little setup here is actually all you need to do. And minus hooking the batteries up to it, it is a branch, a blocker, an OR switch. And then this is this is not part of it. This is just a, a branch for that turret, um, which is set to 10 just for that turret. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it. So all you have to do in the update here is that in the original version two, I had the power out running to the block pass through. I've changed that around to where now the branch out runs to the block pass through and the power out continues on through the OR switch. Um, the power out of the, the blocker still runs through the other input on the OR switch. And then its output is the power output for your base or whatever it is you're trying to do. And the reason I did this was in the original version, you had to set this to some value, which put a very specific load or a very specific active usage on the battery, uh, which was actually unnecessary. So, so the only you know thing that changes here is that there is a one volt discrepancy between the two coming out the end, depending on which one's active. But that's not really a big deal, and this allows you to have your active usage grow as your circuits grow, rather than having to set it every time. So, um, just a small update there, but makes it a lot better. And I'll show you just how this works. So, let's say we have I'm gonna hook up the green battery here. Uh, over to here. This is the green battery side right there. You can see when that turns on, it blocks the blocker. That blocker is the um, for the blue battery. So I'm just going to run this blue battery over to the input on the blue battery side. And that's it. That's all you have to do to set it up. And the way this thing works is that while the green battery is active, uh, it is, you know, being charged. You have to run this based on your, you know, you still have to follow the, the, the minimum charge uh, requirements, which is your active usage divided by 0 0.8 gives you the minimum charge. So assuming that you're going to use all 100 rust watts available, you would do 100 divided by 0 0.8 gives you 125. I'm sending an unnecessary 150 there, but so anything 126 above is fine. Uh, and same thing with the blue battery. Now, in some cases, you might find that you don't have all that. So if I unhook one of these uh, things from my little power source back there, now I've got you know, 150 going to the first battery. I could I could slow that down to say, you know, 130 and the rest, whatever I've left over is what would go to the blue battery. And this is how I originally set this up was that the green battery is the primary. And in some ways this is still true because of the, the nature of how this works. And we'll just experiment this and I'll show you. So no matter what you do, even if you provide this battery with extra because it has uh, you know, zero active usage when it's not in use, it charges very quickly because it has no load on it. So, um, you know, in general, when you're doing this, you have to think of the green battery as the primary because it, you know, take it, it supersedes everything with the blue battery. And I can explain how that, that works. Um, Essentially, let's say we lose the green battery, whether it be because it's destroyed or because, you know, more likely someone destroyed your root power sources and it died. So I unhook it, simula simulating it dying. Uh, now the blue battery has taken over because this blocker is no longer engaged on this block pass through. And so now the blue battery is taken over. And so we've got 98 coming out the top this way. You'd end up with 97. That's that discrepancy I was talking about. And, you know, our turret is still on. So if I were to then hook back up the green battery, let's say the green battery got repaired um, or your or your your root power sources were repaired. Once that green battery hooks back up, it's going to take back over automatically. And so now you have the 96 as I was showing you that discrepancy. And and the, and the reason that it takes over is because it is the primary in that it controls this branch, which is what controls this blocker. So that forces you into the green battery being the, being the primary and that's okay. It's just that you're going to have to, if this, if you use it as a, as a, as a sort of linear battery backup, meaning green battery first, blue battery second, and then the whole thing shuts down because this dies, you know, it gives you eight hours of backup this way, assuming a, a full active usage of a hundred more, if you have less than that. And so 
uh, yeah, that's how it works. But the but the the issue is that let's say you're running off the green battery, you can see that there's a quick dropout and then it comes back on. That's kind of inevitable. Um, you know, let's say you're running off the green battery and the, what, what people were having an issue with is that the power was fluctuating back and forth to so say this battery died because because you know you had too much active usage for your root power sources maybe one of your power sources was, was destroyed or maybe you didn't set it up correctly whatever whatever happened this battery would would die and then all of a sudden you know after the power sources came back on in the morning or something and there was a little bit left it would power back up a little bit and it would take over again there's no lag going this way but then as soon as it died again it would power cycle so people were having issues where this was power cycling because they didn't have enough charge for whatever reason to, to, to compensate for their active usage on that battery. And so um, this is an absolutely fine battery backup to use. You just have to be very aware of your, your charge requirements to keep this, this, this forward battery, this primary battery from cycling on and off because it, it drains and then comes back on and drains and comes back on. And you're gonna end up having this issue of, with, a, with a bunch of turrets or whatever power cycling. And so that's, that's that that was the issue with version two and so this is what version three is going to correct um, version three is a little more a little more complicated whereas version two is very very simple and can be used i mean you know with, with almost some very little resources um version three is still fairly simple in that it's not it's only adding the memory cell as the new switch um, it's just added some extra some extra branches to it uh, and an extra blocker and so you can just see here what it is you need we've got a memory cell on the bottom two blockers the blue switches and then we have three three branch switches up here um, this one up here again is just for the turret it's not part of the system and so um, to connect them is actually fairly simple so i'm just gonna again just like i did on the version two the left side here with this inputs the green side this is the blue side i've kind of color coordinated that uh, as best as I can. Uh, and so just starting from the green side, um, the output of the power out of that goes to the power in of this, this branch. We'll talk about their settings in a moment. Um, the branch out of that branch runs into either side of that or switch. It doesn't matter which side you use. Um, and it's power out, the power out of the green side is gonna run to the set input the top of the three inputs on the right side of the memory cell, it's gonna to run to the set input on that memory cell. Uh, and then starting from this other side here, the blue side, um, again, the power out just runs into the power into that branch. Uh, and then it's branch out just like the other one did, runs into the other side that you didn't use on the OR switch, doesn't matter which one. It's power out just like the other one, runs down to the memory cell, but this time is, is, is into the reset. And the reason we're doing that is that the blue side, you know, the, you want them to be opposite of what their sides are. So the blue side, the output of the memory cell, you know, this this uh, output is running to the block pass through on the blue side. And then the inverted output of this memory cell is running to the block pass through on the green side. So you want them to be toggled opposite of their color, I guess you could think of it that way. And so these are just running down to these inputs to switch, to basically block off the side that that is that is no longer operating. I'll show you how that works. And so. Uh, and then, and then from you know from the the uh, the OR switch, you run up until the output of the OR switch goes to this this um, branch, and that is necessary. Its branch out is what powers the memory cell, and then has one left over to pop out to whatever side is active. Keeping in mind that the memory cell does not it glitches; it doesn't tell you what's coming out. It might tell you one and one or zero or two. You never know. So you just have to know if I send two down here, I know I'll get one out and that's all that matters. Um, it does work. So you leave this one in its default configuration and then whatever comes out of here, this is your actual available power for your base. So this particular system has a like mandatory minimum active usage on the batteries of seven. And I'll show you if we hook this up, uh, same thing. I'm just going to uh, run a jumper over here to the green side from the green battery just like we did before same thing with the blue battery i'm going to run a jumper over to here to the blue battery inside there we go and so now we're set up so if you look at the batteries they have an initial active usage of seven that's like you can think of it as the cost of this system um, that's 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 you will automatically use seven active usage uh, just to power everything and then the minimum setting for the branches is four so these two branches are the ones you set and you mirror them. So whatever you set this one to, you set this one to, you just copy it. And so if I were to say, set this to three, um, it's going to start blinking because that's not enough to power through all the way through the memory cell to block the blocker. So I've got both block, this is trying to block the blockers, but it can't, so it's, it's freaking out. So four, 
is the minimum that will keep it in its you know state that it needs to be in and so what's happening now is you can think of it this way is whatever whatever blocker has the two lights on is the blocker that's passing power so right now we're on the green side the blue side is not active it's being blocked by the memory cell but since the memory cell has two coming in it it's it's not going to tell you what side's coming out half the time uh, but you but you can know that if it's two green lights it's this right side and so but the point is the green side is active the blue side is not and so the way this differs so again you know we have this we have this four minimum right we have this seven active usage minimum so that's the four that i have this set to plus the switches that are in line with it so it's you know taking up that active usage so whatever you want to set for your thing you have to you have to do you know that plus four so if i want this branch to run plus the 10 needed that's 11 so 4 plus 11 is 15 so that gives me my first 11 that i need i'm going to mirror that over to this one and you'll see that that thing turned on up there uh and we're good to go and so the way this one differs and so you know at this point here you go again i guess real quick we can look at this this is the same thing over here i've got a charging block i've currently got it set up as two you know 300 coming in here and i'm just you know sending half one half the other um and there's a difference between how these work. And so, so, so let's, let's take a look at that. So let's say I were to lose power and this, or, or my, my root power sources got too low and this battery was removed. So if I remove that, the system is going to predictably switch over to the blue side. You know, we had a brief power interruption and then everything came back up. Now we're on the blue side because I mirrored this side and the blue battery is now the one who's operating. The difference is, between this version and version three and version two is that version three has no primary battery. So whereas version two, the green battery was your primary battery and you had to operate based on that sort of green to blue idea, this one doesn't matter. The primary battery is whatever one you hook up to at first automatically becomes the primary battery. And if you supply each battery with, you know, again, let's pretend that you're gonna use all hundred rust watts in each battery, then you're going to need 100 divided by 0.8 gives you 125. So I just have 150 ish going to each battery. That's you know too much, but you know 126 or more. And so because of that, I'm supplying each battery with the minimum it would need if it gets fully used. And so it covers the entire range of rust watts available in each battery. And so in this way, uh, you know, right now the blue battery is active, but and here's the difference. If you remember over there, when I hooked the green battery back up, it automatically took over the system and uh, shut down the blue battery because the linear nature of how that particular design works. In this one, if I were to now hook the green battery back up, it's not going to take over. The blue battery stays active because now the blue battery is the one who is controlling the blockage of this this uh, block pass through over here and so now if i lose the blue battery it's going to shut down for just a second come back on and swap over the green battery and if i were to then hook the blue battery back up it is not going to switch over because now the green battery is the is the primary so this one is you know for the cost of seven seven uh you know minimum active usage of seven plus you know the four initial that's really not that bad this creates a essentially a battery backup loop with two primary batteries which is a lot better than that because if this battery were to die for, for some reason say this one dies you know it's going to swap over the blue battery it's not going to ever swap back over to this battery until this battery dies so let's say this battery you know there was, there was something up with the root power sources someone blew them up you fixed it and then you and then it's you know it's, it's it starts getting juice again this battery can just slowly charge up again while this battery takes over and so Whereas you have four hours and four hours, if they completely lose power, um, this system will auto correct itself every time the other battery has time to charge. So whatever this, let's say you've got a little bit of trickle charge going on this battery, whatever this battery can charge over the course of four hours while this one drains, assuming you use all hundred active usage, all hundred rust watts, uh, once this thing shuts down, it's gonna swap back over and make that the primary battery. And so, you know, and if you don't want one to be a primary battery, you can simply, just like I did over there, let's pretend that you don't have that much power yet. Um, you can, you know, now you're gonna have this, the blue battery is, is, is technically a secondary battery in that it's gonna start dying when it's swapped over, but it's still gonna die slower if it has any kind of trickle and this one will continue charging until it, until it uh, comes back. So it's a very big imp uh, improvement actually over how these things work and so it doesn't mean that 
you know, version two is not as good as version three. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Version two is much, much easier to build and it's much easier to do, except that it's linear. The, the, the green battery is your primary and you're limited to it taking over anytime, you know, uh, the, the green batteries hook back up or it gets power, which can cause power cycling. This one could only power cycle I mean, in theory, if they were both charged and it's 100, let's say, again, using the example of 100 rust, rust watts, you know, in, in active usage, it's only going to power cycle once every four hours, if that's the case. And so this one essentially, you can think of it, does not power cycle. So this protects you from that turret drop every time your trickle charge, you know, the battery dies and then the turrets drop and it charges up a little bit and it switches and it comes back. This one won't do that because it won't switch until the next battery fully dies. Uh, and that's the that's the power of it. So um, that's just about all I've got, folks. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise, you can get me on my Discord. See you later.